In my common presence, the usual inner being experiencing was resumed. The following is what happened. Gornohor Harhark, with all those unusual heavy appliances which had been put on him as well, suddenly found himself at a certain height above the chair and began to flounder, as our dear Muller Nazaruddin says, like a puppy who has fallen in a deep pond. As it afterwards proved, my friend Gornohor Harhach had made a mistake while pulling the mentioned levers and switches and had made certain parts of his planetary body more tense than was necessary. In consequence, his presence, together with everything on him, had received a shock, and also the momentum given by the shock, and owing to the tempo proceeding in his presence from taking in the second being food, and to the absence of any resistance in that absolutely empty space, he began to drift, or as I've already said, to flounder like a puppy who has fallen into a deep pond. Having said this with a smile, Beelzebub became silent. A little later he made a very strange gesture with his left hand, and with an intonation not proper to his own voice he continued. While I am gradually recalling and telling you about all this concerning the events of a period of my existence now long since past, the wish arises in me to make a sincere confession to you, just to you, one of my direct heirs who must inevitably represent the sum of all my deeds during the periods of the process of my past being existence. And namely, I wish sincerely to confess to you that when my essence, with the participation of the parts of my presence, subject to it alone, had independently decided to take a personal part in those scientific elucidatory experiments with the demonstrating part of the new invention of Gornohor Harhar, and I had entered into this demonstrating part without the least compulsion from outside. Yet, in spite of it all, my essence, allowed to creep into my being and to be developed side by side with the said strange experiencings, a criminally egoistic anxiety for the safety of my personal existence. However, my boy, in order that you may not at this moment be too distressed, it is not superfluous to add that this happened in me, then, for the first and also for the last time during all the periods of my being existence. But perhaps it would be better for the present not to touch on questions that concern exclusively only our family. Let us rather return to the tale I have begun about the omnipresent Okidanoch and my essence friend Gornohur Harhach, who was, by the way, at one time considered everywhere among ordinary three-brained beings as a great scientist, and is now, though he continues to exist, not only considered not great, but thanks to his own result, that is to say, to his own son, is what our dear Mullah Nazaruddin would call a has-been. Or, as he sometimes says in such cases, he is already sitting in an old American galosh. Well then, while floundering, Gunahur har har with great difficulty and only by means of a special and very complicated maneuver which he made, finally managed to get his planetary body, burdened with the various unusually heavy appliances, down onto the chair again, and this time he fixed it all with the aid of special screws, which were on the chair for that purpose. And when we were both more or less arranged and communication was possible between us by means of the said artificial connectors, he first drew my attention to those apparatuses hanging over the table which I told you were very much like the Momono Duars, 
On close inspection, all these were alike in appearance and served in three identical sockets, from the ends of each of which carbon candles projected, such as are usually to be found in the apparatuses which your favorites call electric arc lamps. Having drawn my attention to these three socket-like momonoduars, he said, each of these externally similar apparatuses has a direct connection with those secondary containers which I pointed out to you while we were still outside, and in which, after the artificial jartklom, each of the active parts of Okidanoch collects into a general mass. I have adapted these three independent apparatuses in such a way that there, in this absolutely empty space, we can obtain from those secondary containers for the required experiment as much as we wish of every active part of Okidanoch in a pure state. And also, we can at will change the force of the striving to reblend into a whole which is acquired in them and which is proper to them according to the degree of density of the concentration of the mass. And here, within this absolutely empty space, I shall first of all show you that same non-law conformable phenomenon which we recently observed while we were outside the place where it proceeded. And namely, I shall again demonstrate to you this world phenomenon which occurs when, after a law conformable jartklom, the separate parts of the whole Okidanoch meet in a space outside of a law conformable arising, and without the participation of one part strive to reblend into a whole. Having said this, he closed that part of the surface of the har ha ha tsaha the composition of which had the property of allowing rays to pass through it. Then he pulled two switches and pressed a certain button, as a result of which the small plate lying on the table, composed of a certain special mastic, automatically moved toward the mentioned carbon candles. And then, having again drawn my attention to the ammeter and the voltmeter, he added, I have again admitted the influx of parts of the Okidanoch, namely the anode natius and the cathode natius of equal force of striving to reblend. When I looked at the ammeter and the voltmeter, and indeed saw that their needles moved, and stopped on the same figures I had noticed the first time we were still outside the har ha 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 I was greatly surprised, because in spite of the indication of the needles, and the intimation of Gornohor har ha himself, I had neither noticed nor sensed any change in the degree of my perception of the visibility of the surrounding objects. So without waiting for his further explanations, I asked him, But why, then, is there no result from this non-law conformable striving to reblend into a whole of the parts of the Okidanoch? Before replying to this question, he turned off the only lamp, which worked from a special magnetic current. My astonishment increased still more because, in spite of the darkness which instantly ensued, it could clearly be seen through the walls of the har ha ha zaha that the needles of the ammeter and voltmeter still stood in their former places. Only after I had somehow got accustomed to such a surprising constatation, Gornohor har ha said, I have already told you, that the composition of the material of which the walls of this construction in which we are at this moment are made possesses the property of not allowing any vibrations arising from any source whatsoever to pass through it, with the exception of certain vibrations arising from nearby concentrations. And these latter vibrations can be perceived by the organs of 